to do a routine or to not do a routine for any instrumentalist is a big question. I've gone long stretches of years on both sides of the camp, and I want to talk quickly about the pros and cons of either. Uh, my biggest early influence was Ed Kleinhammer, the legendary former bass trombonist of the Chicago Symphony, and he instilled in me his guiding principle of practice and performance. The music comes first. You'll develop a technique you need when you need it. If I was working on a concerto with the fast section, we would never work on double tonguing. We'd practice it slowly, cleanly, and musically, and break out the half-speed tape player until it sounded better. Um, we never defined a routine for me. Instead, each day after a short warm-up, I took stock of what I thought needed polishing or what skills were needed for upcoming performances. But the music always came first. I did this for 10 years and made every effort to play musically and on occasion succeeded. However, I still had the same shortcomings in my playing. I struggled with pitch and I didn't have the low range I wanted. So when I moved to New York City, I sought out Sam Burtis, who introduced me to Carmine Caruso's method, which is a very specific routine done with a lot of care and thought. This structure gave me confidence that I could learn new skills slowly but surely by comparing how I sounded day to day. It gave me a barometer for how I was feeling every morning. And then I did this for 10 years. I made every effort to extend my range, clean up my tone and articulations, and on occasion succeeded. At the time, I considered Kleinhammer's method to be a musical approach and Caruso's method to be a technical approach, and that neither could do both. But I th what I thought was the downside of the musical approach was that I wasn't learning enough technique. And what I thought was the downside of the Caruso approach was that I became muscle bound and rigid on my plane. During the COVID break from live music, I've been mixing up a number of routines like Remington, Joe Alessi's exercises, Toby Oft, Stamp, and my own exercises, um, trying to keep my strength up, and Scott Hartman. I had the thought in the back of my mind that because I had studied with Kleinhammer years ago, I still had those beautiful breath attacks and that soft, new articulation he had me work on in my bag of tricks. <laughs> but two weeks ago in frustration, I threw my routine out the window and decided to do nothing but focus on a gentle attack, it's something I really want for a project I'm trying to record right now. I went back to my method books, listened to some great recordings, and really slowed my practice down. Am I doing this right? Am I actually doing what I think I'm doing? Is my tongue in the right spot? Does this actually sound good? I asked myself a lot of questions and really did it bit by bit. Slowly it's coming along and I was reminded yet again that a skill you thought you learned long ago doesn't stay polished on its own. Whether it's sight reading, intonation, tone, range, dynamics, or rhythm, the only way to keep doing it well is conscientious thought and focused practice. Maybe I'm finally old enough to understand what Kleinhammer was talking about. You can make any note musical, even in the middle of a completely technical Arbenz exercise, as long as you are focused on playing it exactly in the style you want to play it in. Success lies completely in your mindset. Be open to improvement. Be open to what an exercise is trying to teach you. And yes, play every note as beautifully as you can. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Learn more at mapleandbrass.com.